welcome back to Just Campers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the king and link pins and their associated bushes. Now, today we're going to be doing it on Porsche Speedster, but it is exactly the same as a VW Beetle right the way up to 1965. So the first thing I noticed with this Porsche is that we have a little bit of top to bottom movement on the actual king pin itself. So I've adjusted our wheel bearing up snug, so I now I haven't got any wheel bearing movement. And I can actually top to bottom it and I can feel that I've got that movement in the kingpin. And I can put my hand behind and do it and actually feel the movement there. So I'm going to go ahead by removing the road wheel and our drum and uh, getting it stripped down so we can get those king and link pins in. So this is our king and link pin assembly off of the vehicle now. As you can see, these are our link pins. So these pins go through here, there's bushings in here, and then we have shims either side as well, and that helps us determine the right angle for our stub axle. And in the center, goes through the center, is our king pin. And that's where we've got wear on this item at the moment. So we've got movement in here. So effectively, our stub axle is doing that when it's on the car. So we're going to get that stripped. Firstly, we're going to clean it because it's absolutely filthy, as you can see, all the old grease and rubbish. So we get that clean and then we can get the rest of these uh, link pins pushed out. They're fairly tight in there at the end. I mean, they're loose when they're in there like that. Obviously, we've got to draw these right out on both sides on here as well. So let's get it cleaned up and see if we can get it dismantled. So back on the bench, nice and clean. I've managed to drift our link pins out and I've used a punch and a copper hide hammer to do that quite simply. And as you can see, these are all the shims that go with our link pins. Now there's 10 shims that go for the top link pin and 10 shims that go for the bottom. You may have six one side, four the other, four one side, six the other. In the manual, once you measure the offset of the arms, which I'll go through with you, it tells you how many shims to put either side, whether it's on the inside or the outside. But again, I'll go through that when we get to that point. So our next point of work on here is to remove these link pin bushes. Now these drift out quite easily with a hammer and a socket. Uh, you can do it on a press if you've got a press. If you haven't got a press to hand, let's say a hammer and socket will do it. So that's how we're going to do it because we haven't got a press here at the moment. So I'll show you guys how to do it without a press. I'm going to use the vise because it's nice and solid. So we're going to place our arm on here like so. Get it nice and flat. Use our socket and we're just going to get these bushes moving. Move that as far as that will go. Again, same with this one. Once we've got them started, we're just going to place them in the jaws of the vise. I'm not going to do them up, but I'm just going to use that as a support and obviously make sure we're on the flat so we're not damaging this surface on the other side. And we're going to just gently tap through. Make sure we've got clearance. Just open up a little bit more. Finish off with a longer one. Nice and gently with our copper hide. There we go. Do the last one. Same again. As long as we're across the jaws, got good support on this face, we can tap these out quite easily. Sometimes if they're really tight, you will need a press. So if you find you can't get them to move, you'd probably have to go to your local engineering shop and get them to press them out for you. But nine out of ten times, they're generally just tap out with a hammer and a socket, there we go. So drifting the king pin out can be quite tough because it's very tight in the centre part and loose in these bushes. This is where it wears in these bushes here. So we have to force this through here. Now we either can use that with a, a hammer and a punch or if you find that it's really stiff again you'll probably have to um, get that pushed out by your in local engineering company on their press. I've managed to get this to move so I've used the old link pin and use the old link pin to drive our king pin out. And then I've used one of the old link pin bushes to allow that king pin to slide through. Again, I'm using the vise because the vise is nice and solid. So we'll try and get that last bit out. Okay, so that last little drift. Okay, so what I've done, I've managed to knock that pretty much all the way home. So I'm gonna have to and get that off, like so. So obviously you can see the old Kingpin starting to come out, take that out. And I'm going to have to use a longer punch to get down there to knock the rest of it out. 
And again, I will use the old push in from the king pin, uh, from the link pins. Just a bit of patience, and we just keep tapping away. So we're very nearly there, drifting our pin out. We've only got a tiny bit left in there. Again, we're going to use the vice jaws to use the face to be able to tap our last bit through. So we're pretty close now. Just going to tap our last bit through. So you need to take a lot of care in not hitting your hand here. So I say, if you don't feel comfortable using the hand with the drift, it may be worth getting the engineering company to push it out for you. But I'm so close now. Hey, there we go, we're out. Stop axle with our thrust washer on there. We need to retain that. Um, we're gonna replace this. There's a, a, a nylon bush in there as well. So we'll replace that. So incidentally, if your kingpin's not tight into your hub, then you'll probably need another hub assembly because the, the kingpin should be tight in this section here and it should be free to swivel in the bushes in this part of our um, link pin assembly. So these bushes are the next job for us to push out, some, which we'll do. That's our next little job. So that was good. And there's our old kingpin. So I suspect all our wear was in our bushes as it was extremely tight to come out of our stub axle. So again, we're going to set this up in the vise. And then using a bit of tube that I've cut to the right, it's the right diameter tube. I've just cut it and made sure I've got a nice straight edge. We're going to use that to tap our bushes out. Give that a gentle tap and see what happens. Oh, that feels pretty good. So, I'm going to sit it on the vise. We, we need to put something between here so we don't damage this part. And so that felt pretty tight. So I'm going to put that, okay, see if we can get them moving. So now we have our king pin removed. We've managed to drift that all the way through. So we don't need that. We're going to replace that. Then we can take the stub axle off of our link pin hub part, like so. And in here is a thrust washer. So in the cap is just a nylon washer and a cap. We will be replacing that. This is what we need to retain here. This is our thrust washer. So we get that nice and clean and we keep that. Uh, and as I say, we have a new cap and a new nylon washer to go on it. That's that. So we're back to our link pin part and our king pin bushes are still in here. So we need to drift these out next. That's our next job. So we're gonna do that on the vise like so. So we need to support the part, as I say, because we're using a drift. Again, if you're using a press, you'd still need to support this part. I'm gonna use the vise so we can support that. Uh, I have a piece of tube, I've already done one. I've had a piece of tube that is a good diameter, it's a good correct diameter to, to fit over the, to sit on top of the bush, sorry. Uh, and that should help us drift that through. So let's see if we can get that moving first. Yeah, it felt like that moved straight away. Again, so let's be, make sure that we're pushing the bush in between the jaws of the vise. Nice and easy. That's our old bush, drifted through. Do the same with the other side. There we go. Right, so that's our bushes removed. So we'll give these another good clean up now. Make sure we've got some good faces and we haven't done any damage to there, which no, we haven't, that's good. Make sure they're all nice and clean. We'll take our grease nipples out and clean through there as well. Make sure we haven't got any debris behind there. Obviously we don't want to be pumping grease into it and moving debris around our new bushes. So let's get that clean. Ready to fit our brand new king pin bush into our thrust face side. So again, we're gonna use our solid part of ice. And we're just gonna drift him down until he's flush. Using our little bit of tube, that's the right diameter to sit on the bush like so. Just going to gently tap him into place. Lovely, so he's just a bit high still, so we're just going to go down until he's just flush or just under. We did see some of the material being broached off as it was going in, it's nothing to worry about, that's just the bush fitting in there nice and tight. Then we do the same with the other side. This time we have to come through this side. You could do it through that way if you had a smaller punch and another press that side on, on the press. But as we're just tapping it in with our hammer, we're going to use coming from this side. 
Again, use our tube. Make sure we started nicely, yeah. You see, you have to make sure that bush is square before you start driving him through. As you can see, he's driving through nicely. So there's a little bit of material broached off from the outside of the bush, but there's nothing to worry about. So we'll keep going until he's flush. Yeah, good. He's down through. And he's gone down far enough that we can get our gone down far enough so we can get our link pin bush through. Okay, the next thing we need to do is just file out these grooves. Now those grooves are to file out to hold our cap for our thrust washer assembly. So we'll do that next. Now I've clamped him in the vise with a little bit of leather just to protect our faces. And then I'm going to go through with our file and, and file our grooves for our thrust washer to locate into. Taking care only to file the bush and not the uh, link pin arm. Nice. So we've got our lovely groove through there. That'll hold the cap in place. We have our nice new bushes pressed in. I've cut the groove out for the thrust washer cap to sit into. So our new kingpin doesn't fit through the bushes yet. The reason it doesn't fit through the bushes yet is because we need to ream those bushes. Now we need to ream those bushes so they're in the same plane as each other. So we can't just ream one and then ream the other. They need to be reamed together. So we do have a special reamer here. This is our special reamer. Now this is reamed to 18 millimeters. So we'll place it through our first bush, as you can see, then it will guide through the second bush. We'll cut the first one and then we'll guide through back the other way. Now, if you don't have an 18 mil reamer that's this length, because obviously you need to go to, through both bushes at the same time, then you need to take it to your local engineering shop and get them to put an 18 mil reamer through it, either on a, a machine or with a hand reamer like this. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to get it in the vise and we're going to get it reamed. Let's do it. So we're going to start this side. I've got a bit of leather in the vise. I'm just going to put a little bit of cutting fluid on our reamer or a little bit of oil if you haven't got cutted fluid, just something to give it a bit of lubrication, take the friction away when we're cutting. So we're going to slide this in. As I say, the bottom part is slightly smaller than the cutter and that acts as a guide. And now we're going to... I've got a pair of flat jaw pliers here so I can get onto the drive side bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of force down and ream through in one direction until we're through. It does feel like it's cutting nicely. Just again, taking our time with it. I felt like it went through then. Yeah, it did. Excellent. That's the first bush cut. And we remove our material that we've cut out. Gently withdraw our reamer backwards. Or the opposite direction to which we cut. Like so. Right. Good. Just give that a wipe. And move this to the edge. We're going to cut through the bottom bush now as well. So we've cut our top bush using the bottom as a guide, and now we're going to cut the bottom bush using the top as the guide. So I want to be able to make sure that I can go all the way through with the reamer. A little bit more cutting oil on the... So we can slide him through. So obviously we've already cut the top bush. Slide through that fairly straightforwardly easily. Right, now we're down to cut our second bush. So the same again. I'm going to use my flat jaw pliers and just gently apply some nice pressure downward. Of course, it's now using our top guide, our top bush as a guide to parallel cut the bottom. Like so. There we go, cut through. That's cut through nicely. So we're going to draw that all the way through now. Just check that, but that looks good. So there's no chattering on the face there, it looks lovely. We've mar managed to parallel ream all the way through both bushes. So let's give that a clean up and fit our kingpin. Let's try our nice new kingpin in our nice new kingpin bushes that we've just reamed with no grease or anything. These are nice and clean and dry. Again, no grease or oil on that. In he goes. So the kingpin should be able to go through both bushes. It should be easy to turn like it is, but have no play. So if I grab hold of this and lift this, yep, no play that end, and no play that end. So we've parallel reamed that perfectly. I'm going to use the old link pin to drive the rest of our new king pin through. So you can hear it's getting quite tight on our stub axle, which is good, we want it tight here. 
and loose, well not loose, but we want it to be able to move on the bushes. So we're just going to keep gently driving that through. Checking it as we go, it's all looking good. It's certainly going in easier than this one came out. Okay, sometimes they're quite easy to push out, sometimes they can be quite difficult. We're not far away now to get this one in. Really close to the top of the bush now, so this looks good. Just give it a real gentle tap. I'm just going to check the location of where the kingpin comes through. Looks really good. So that's that's the kingpin in. Feels lovely. So next we need to get our link bushes back in, ready for our new link pins to go through. Our new link pin bushes have a, a grease hole in the bottom, so we have to make sure that we line that up with the bottom part, actually with in line with the kingpin. So as the grease goes in, it fills the kingpin and comes into our link pin bush as well. So we must make sure that that's at the bottom. Now I'm going to push this in with the vise to get it started. A little bit of grease first. Again, make sure that that is in line with our kingpin, which happens to be at the bottom. Again, if you've got a, a press, it's a lot easier to use a press, but it can be done in a vise. So they are quite tight, but not overly tight. There we go, it's starting to drive it, drive it in. Just make sure it's going in the square before we go too far. That's it, so that's our new kingpin in, our new link pin bushes are in. So uh, we're ready to put it back on the car. Before we can refit our hub assembly, we need to determine the offset between the lower arm and our upper arm. And we do that by means of a straight edge. So I'm just going to place the straight edge across the flats on the lower arm. And what we need to do is measure that gap between our straight edge and the upper arm. And that will determine where we place our shims how many each side and we can do that by referring to the manual and that will let us know where to place them. So let's check it out, let me measure it and see where we are. I measured our offset as 8mm, so if we look at the table in the manual, 8mm is here and the upper torsion arm, it says here that our inner shims should be a number of 6 and our outer shims should be a number of 4 and then we look on the lower arm, it says our inner shims should be a number of 4 and our outer shims should be six. So again, that's a total of 10 with uh, six one side for the other. So we have to make sure we get these round the right way. So I'm gonna do the upper torsion arm first. So when we looked in the manual, it said our upper outer had four shims. So this is our upper pin. So on the outer, we're gonna put our four shims. So I'm gonna put these on first. These are already lightly greased. through there like so. So four on the outer and six on the inner. And then on the bottom, it was six on the outer and four on the inner. So let's do our six, pop these through. Give them a little jiggle to get them to sit correctly. Not quite in there yet. There we go, lovely. So that's sat in there nice. That one's sat in there nice. So we need our six shims on the inner on the top and our four shims on the inner on the bottom. Those on. That should give us our correct spacing as we've measured our offset. So that's ready to go on the car. As I said, this is on a Porsche Speedster, uh, 356 is the same. And these faces here where our shims push up against with our stub axle assembly, these are flat, as you can see, these are like a machined face. Now on the Beetle, there's a recess in here and that recess is for a cap and a seal. So if you have the recess, on the beetle, the cap would fit in there, and then the seal would fit within this cap. I'll insert a picture so you can see what I'm talking about on the beetle. I've used a ratchet strap around our damper assembly to pull the two arms together so we've got the correct spacing to be able to put our hub assembly back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our assembly on and get it bolted up, and then we can uh, fill it full of grease. So that's the king and link pins replaced, the vehicle all back together and on the ground. For more how-to videos, visit us at justcampus.com or follow us on YouTube or Facebook.